Welcome to Seattle. Well known for Starbucks, the fish market, and Alaskan cruises, this is the start of our next big adventure. And this just isn't about Taylor and I. This is the beginning of our second group trip. <coughs> with both old friends and new friends. If you missed the first group cruise, this was back in January of 2020. You know, right before the whole COVID thing shut down the entire world. And we had such a great time, created lifelong friends, and immediately began planning the next trip with everyone on board before the cruise was even over. And after a year of cancellations, we have finally begun to embark on our next big trip, Alaska. But first, a little bit of Seattle. Good morning from Seattle and from our hotel bathroom. Uh, while Josh is hiking Mount Rainier today, not the whole way up, but he's hiking with our friend Zach, uh, the rest of us that are already here in Seattle, we are going down to Pike Place Market to start our day. We've got the whole crew together now, and we are heading down to Pike Place. It is perfect weather right now. I can wear a sweater, but it's still sunny outside. I think it's like 68 right now, and the humidity here is like nothing. So that's also very nice. But yeah, we are gonna go get some Starbucks, I think, because I need coffee. We gotta get in the line. It's a long, long line. Is it our first time here? Yes. Very cool. Where are we all visiting from? A bunch of places. Welcome to the original Starbucks. A lot of history here, so definitely take it all in. This is the same floor you're walking on that people stepped in in 1971, so quite a bit of luck to it, right? Awesome. Um, <laughs> um, so, like most Starbucks, we have all of our merchandise out, but unlike most Starbucks, it's all exclusive to this store. Um, you can touch it, you can see it. We also ask that you leave it there. Anything you want to buy, let us know. We have a brand new one that hasn't been touched by hundreds and thousands of people, right? Um, when you're ready to order merch or drinks, it'd be on this side here with the registers. The side over here, they're waiting on drinks, so you can ignore okay. it. Okay. All right, we got our Starbucks from the first Starbucks. Now we're like actually in the market and we're trying to find this biscuit place to get some food. There's like a lot of jewelry and art and handmade, handcrafted items over here on this side. We're gonna go out the back, out onto the water. So I think there's like a back area here somewhere. So today, Zach and I are traveling about two and a half hours southeast of Mount Rainier for a half day hike. Now, ever since our trip last year to California, I've tried to live with the philosophy of no regrets. Meaning that each time we have the opportunity to travel and see new things. If I see something that I wanna do, I do it. Okay, here's the other thing too. We just had this conversation in the car that we need to like, Josh is like, next time we go on a trip, like we need to like stop places. Like if we- Wait, wait, no, no, this is what I said. So <laughs> this, this is what I'm saying. The net, like if we continue, if Taylor and I continue to do things like, like short this, little trips, right? driving around places. These trips where, yeah, where we kind of fly into some place, we get a rental car, and uh, we kind of make our way around. The one thing that I want to do from now on is to make sure that like if we see something, we stop. We stop. And Mount Rainier is one of these opportunities. I mean, this mountain literally rises out of the sky when you're in Seattle. We started about 5 a.m. to get to the mountain early before the trails got busy. And, you know, we went back and forth on where to go and landed here. The Summerland Trail. It's a total of 8.4 miles out and back with a 2,000 foot elevation gain. We were hopeful it would give us a view of just about everything Mount Rainier has to offer. Glaciers, 
waterfalls, streams, meadows, you name it, we were hoping that we would see it. But until we got there, it was very cloudy. And well, the bad news didn't really end there. Morning. Hi. How are you? Have you done this before? First time. Just so you know, when you get to about four miles up, you're gonna cross Frying Pan Creek. Pretty nasty looking crossing right now. Okay. Um, there's a bridge that's like a, a log this much that's sawed off so it's flat. It's kind of tilty, but it seems to be locked in, but there's a, a railing to it that instead of being like this, it's like out there where, I mean, if you could grab it, yeah. you'd be throwing yourself over the press. Oh boy. And to get to the bridge, there's like a side channel that is probably higher than normal because of the outlet that we've been having. Yeah. And so, I mean, there are places where it's this deep and there are places where it's this deep, but it's very fast, very cool. Okay. So that might be where you end. That's where I ended because also it was so foggy, you couldn't see a thing. Yeah. Like, like there's not going to be a mountain goat inside when I, if I get there. Yeah. The crossing that this guy's talking about is at Fragipan Creek. And even from the aerial here, you can see that it looks like a pretty decent crossing, but you can definitely see that the river uh, at high times can be pretty wide. Well, I mean, I hate to be like, I'm here. So, but I don't, we'll see what it looks like. Yeah, let's see what it looks like. I mean, if it looks... It looks sketchy. If it looks like, dangerous. If it looks like we might die. Yeah. But uh, I saw there's another guy coming up behind yeah, us too. Freezing. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. And this is the crossing at Frying Pan Creek. And while it may look intimidating at first, the water really was not that deep. Uh, and it was fairly easy to cross. And so after the most dangerous crossing, we continued our way up the mountain to hopefully get some awesome views. So Zach and I have been on the trail now for about two hours and it was super cloudy when we came in this morning and uh, we were really hoping that it would start to clear. And it is uh, a blessing because look at that, oh man. We got it. Like, we're almost to the end of the trail, too. And to get up here and get, like, that view with the clouds starting to part from the sun is just fantastic. I mean, absolutely amazing. Oh, my gosh. Now, while we really were enjoying this view as the clouds began to break up ahead, we really started to see our first real challenge, which... Uh, yeah, and then right here, to your left, should be a switchback. And reading some of the reviews from all trails uh, leading up to this, people had said that you should probably have crimps or cramps for your boots and uh, actual like walking poles, hiking poles, which we brought neither of those. And this is the first time I've ever done a hike like this where we're walking on snow. Like this is snowpack and it's very cool. But at the same time, as we begin to ascend the trail, it is extremely dangerous. And so I cannot stress you enough to do as I say and not as I do because we didn't bring the necessary equipment and very quickly uh, things could have gone downhill for us. Literally, no pun intended. Everybody's coming down the stairs and I found this little wall tucked away in the corner here. It is just absolutely beautiful. All right, we found the biscuit place. It's called Honest Biscuits. Now, Chris and Sarah were here yesterday, or it, this was in the past. Okay, they've been on multiple Alaskan cruises, and they've been here before, so they said we have to try. The biscuits are huge. Oh, my gosh, I can see them, and they're huge, and we are ready for some food. Got our giant biscuits here. I got a fried egg, bacon, cheese, mayo, it looks amazing. And the biscuits are homemade in there. We all got biscuits. They're sitting in the sun. We're sitting in the shade because it is warm in the sun. <laughs> So 
So we are currently making our way to the gum wall. So of course, I gotta chew some gum up to put on the gum wall. We found it. Oh my gosh. Got my gum. I'm gonna find a spot over here. Yeah. I was gonna make it stringy, but it's too small. Stay. There you go. It's there. <laughs> I almost lost where it was. <laughs> it's between the two pieces. Oh no, I lost two. Oh, there it is. We got our gum on the wall. And now we're heading to the shops. Like, I'm just amazed because I didn't realize this was like a whole big area. I thought it was like one little wall, like the purple wall at Magic Kingdom. This is uh, huge. Now we are going into the fish market area because this is where they throw the fish around. Apparently this is like an iconic thing. I'm not really sure. We're about to find out. So we're walking down this hallway and we all happen to glance in this window and we see the Disney stuff. So now all of us had our faces pressed against the window. <laughs> gotta see what Disney stuff we got so in there. So this floor here is kind of like Disney World, how they had all of the tiles with names on it. So that's what these are, people's names all over the different tiles. It was basically so they could refurbish the floors here. People bought a tile and then they were able to redo the floor. So I'm getting the feeling we're like back in San Francisco because we're walking up this really, really steep hill. Yes, I'm filming this. <laughs> this is a struggle. We're, you could have picked a worse part of me. Oh yeah, we've seen a worse part. This is a struggle. Struggle. So we all made our way into Rachel's ginger beer for some cocktails. So they pretty much only have ginger beer here. Uh, so we got lots of ginger beer cocktails around. Kate and I got margaritas without ginger beer in it. <laughs> but this is a cute little place. All, all of the shops here are like local and small, boutique-like. So we have made our way to Old Stove Brewing Co, which is attached to the Honest Biscuits that we had for breakfast this morning. So there was nobody in here this morning and now it is like bumping. But it's a really cool like little brewery here. They got all kinds of food and beers on draft. So we got a big table here for all of us and we are gonna get some drinks and some of us are gonna eat. And oh, I can see the fairies out there. Oh, well look, would you look at that? So obviously I was okay, which is great, but just to give you guys an idea, when you're doing these switchbacks in some of these places, climbing up these trails, going up the mountain, it's not simply just this kind of, you know, area that, you know, if you slip, you might only roll a little ways. Like if you slip and fall, you are going to go the whole way down because it's all ice and uh, you're just going to slide right down it. Certainly don't want to fall down that way. So it is very... You have to be very careful and take your time. It's not just regular snow, it's packed in there. So you really have to kick and make some footing spots for you. Uh, otherwise, if you do happen to slip, uh, you will slide down the mountain and uh, it's not gonna be a very good day for you. Well, Zach and I officially made it all the way to the end of our, uh, of our trail, which uh, was awesome. And we're still up here, we're just kind of taking in some of the views this isn't even like really i mean like this is a nice sight but like the other view is is over here on the other side of these trees 
And uh, there's already somebody up here camping, so I'm trying to not be, like, super loud and, and disturb them because it was really nice and peaceful up here. But um, it's amazing. Like, you know, we were just sitting here talking about how, you know, you, you never know when you're going to get to come back. And you never know if you even might get tomorrow or whatever. So if you have the opportunity to do something, you know, you should just go out and do it. And, you know, I mean, that's what we did today. So we didn't we didn't cl- we didn't climb uh, the uh, the Camp Muir Trail, which which would have been as high as we can go without a, a climbing permit. But, um, you know, we still did quite a bit of elevation change. And and to be able to see the glacier over here and um, the spire peak behind that. And it's just unbelievable. It's incredible up here. It's crazy. Ready to go down here? Yeah, I'm ready. Hang out for the rest of the day. Oh, that would be. I would hang out for the rest yeah. of the day. It's awesome. I mean, these trees are cool, but how cool would that be if they were going? Oh, I know, right? Just get that nice panoramic shot. Uh, I wonder if anybody's. I'm sure they have. Been to the top of that. Yeah, Dude, are we missing? Yeah, because we had this nice open view down here. So while we aren't entirely sure exactly what we heard, we're pretty sure it was the glacier shifting because it was it was a, a sound that was so low, but we could also feel it uh, in our bodies. And it was just, it was an unreal thing. So we had to make our way around and see if we could actually see anything happening. Oh, shit, look. Right over here. There's guys hiking it right now. Or climbing. On the mountain? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like this first ledge? So, okay, so we've got like this rock right here. Just follow the point. You know, right at the end of the point, you're going to see him. Guy's wearing an orange jacket. Oh, that's so cool. So we actually can see guys uh, that are doing a climb right now. And... uh, you know, I'd be interested to know if they're actually making the climb up this side and then going to go all the way up there to the to the Spire Peak. That is so cool. And as we began to make our way down the mountain, we ran into something that ended up being a joke the entire length of this trip. Morning. You guys are early birds. Yeah. It's, very, it's beautiful up there. Did you see bear? No, we haven't seen any bear yet. We heard somebody just came down. Oh yeah? Yeah, he said that he saw bear up here. Oh wow. Nope, not yet. So. Maybe it was far up. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Enjoy. And as we made our way back down the mountain, we passed several other people along the way who all asked us if we had seen Uh, This bear that apparently roams around up here off of this trail and you know For hiking as far out as we did and getting to see all of the landscape that we did We only saw one little bird and a chipmunk and that was it as far as wildlife goes. We didn't see any bear We only saw other people uh, but it was still a lot of fun and uh, We would definitely do it again if we had the opportunity (laughs) 